guys, SerpentX here. This is a follow-up video to my previous one talking about the Asus B450M Plus gaming review. Now, I want to talk more or less about the 2600 and the overclocking adventure that I had with this chip. Now, mind you, I've been dealing with AMD ever since the uh, 9950 Black Edition, even before that, uh, with the Agena architecture. And I really have a profound love for AMD but of course I've been using Intel um, until recently when uh, AMD has taken the performance crown or excuse me performance budget crown uh, they're back in the game they're doing good as you can see with their stocks and the the Ryzen 2600 uh, will get you up to 3.9 gigahertz where its predecessor the Ryzen 5 1600 would only get up to 3.6 now people could overclock the 1600 and certainly get up to uh, you know I believe 3.9 gigahertz easily some people were able to hit 4 gigahertz uh, depending depending on the silicone lottery silicon not silicone it's not breast damn it anyways um, the 1600 held the budget performance crown for a hot minute and now the 2600 and the new 2000 series CPUs come out and so uh, they have taken over and the 2600 to me was the better buy even though the 1600 was cheaper um, and the 2600X was a little bit more expensive but it could overclock a little bit higher it could actually get up to 4.2 gigahertz now I wanted to see if this chip the Ryzen 5 2600 can get to 4.2 now of course during the the CPU making process um, certain chips perform better than others which is why they're binned and they go to certain SKUs um, the 2600X is a little bit more expensive and that clock is easily achievable with the 2600 however it's not achievable with the stock reference cooler now the stock reference cooler that you get with it the RAF cooler um, is meant for 65 watts right so when you start pushing that threshold and you're 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 boosting XFR it can handle it no problem 3.9 gigahertz but when you try to get 4 gigahertz and uh, above, you're, you're, you're going to go past the, uh, the limits of that stock cooler. Um, with the 2600X, uh, you get a better cooler, which can handle the 95 watts, but then you can push it a little bit further. I, I, I can't personally talk on the 2600X and my experience with that. Uh, there are plenty of videos out there, so check those guys out. But I know for the 2600, you certainly may want to consider upgrading your cooler. Now, I was able to get to 4 gigahertz on the stock cooler, but as long as you're not doing any rendering, heavy workloads, or benchmarks, you should be fine. Normal gaming, temps were absolutely fine. They were anywhere between 65 to 70 at certain times. And as you can see here on the page, the max temps for most of these guys is 95C. However, if you start pushing past 75, um, I believe the, the CPU or the, uh, the protection uh, for the CPUs internally would start to downclock to uh, kind of keep that balance between performance and thermal threshold. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of videos uh, and, and try to go through what I can here, but this is what I would recommend. In the BIOS, it's the best way to overclock. In my last video, I showed you how to do it through Ryzen Master and through uh, the ASUS AI suite and of course each manufacturer for the motherboards have their own particular uh, program application that you can use to overclock but in the BIOS that's the best way to do it if you're unfamiliar with the BIOS or you're caught or you're worried about touching it I certainly understand that's why ASUS has the easy system or the autotune feature where you can just click it and it will automatically find the best uh, performance area and it will automatically do it based on your cooling so if you upgrade the cooling um, you should get even more performance. Uh, basically, I want to show you something here. I upgraded to the H100, the original H100, and yes, I am using Shadow Play once again because I did not have my capture card or OBS on my uh, system that I was building for my children. Uh, I use this cooler because we started to see some some pretty crazy temps. But look at the idle here: 27C, 29C. 28C and and yes those might be temperatures on the motherboard and, and other components on the on the motherboard itself but at the top there we're hitting 28C and I'm just using cryonaut with the H100i or yeah H100 
uh, the original one, the square one. Um, I think it's an old cooler, but it, it, I only used it for two years, so it was perfectly fine. Temps were pretty good. Now, Link or Corsair Link was reporting, uh, reporting incorrect information, which is why I compared it against HW Info. But when I really start to benchmark or, or test out this system, it performed pretty well. Um, keeping temps well within check, I want to say. Uh, and, and in order to reach the 4 gigahertz overclock, um, I was using like 1.35, 1.38 vCore. Um, and I want to see if I have something here. Uh, again, Ryzen Master, I did hit 4.25. Uh, yeah, 4.22, excuse me, 4.22. And the temp still stayed in check. Voltage was like 1.38. Uh, between 4.3 now I was unstable at this point because I had to in order to hit 4.2 gigahertz on your Ryzen 2600 you are going to want to mess with low line calibration and possibly the switching frequency but again this depends on your motherboard highly I highly recommend checking out the website or the manual to determine what setting is what because medium setting on an Asus motherboard may not be the same for um, you know an ASRock or a Oris motherboard so I ran some ADA to, to stress test and find out, and I was not stable at this point because I was trying to get the peak uh, overclock while reducing or keeping the voltage as low as possible. Again, 1.38, 1.40 at 4.2 was not achievable. Uh, however, 4 gigahertz at 1.40 or 1.39 is achievable easily, and that is a stable overclock. Again, but it depends on the silicon lottery and you have to kind of find out where your CPU likes to sit. So if you're not familiar with the BIOS or you don't like it, then use the Ryzen Master or whatever your motherboard uh, provides for you. Um, I did some, some testing. I ran ADA, but I can't record while running ADA. So at 4.2 gigahertz, the max temps was not bad whatsoever. Now 4.2 was more like 4.194, uh, but I did push a little bit past that 4.22. Uh, and look at the temps. I got up to 85.8 running ADA. And if I could, if I actually go back here, let's see. Look at the wattage. I was pulling 122 watts at a vCore of 1.43. So that's not something I would recommend, which is why you may want to get the 2600X because it could hit 1.42 at a more comfortable voltage because it's a bin CPU but it is achievable from a 2600 just know that you're going to be using more electricity you're going to be uh, pulling more uh, you know increasing the TDP uh, to around 120 to 100 watts depending on your overclock but if you're not comfortable pushing 1.43 that bottom V core uh, that says 1.46 here just disregard that um, because that's that's a that's a time that it hit and it, that doesn't mean that's necessarily what it was running at all the time. Let's see if I can go back here. It was commonly running at 1.40 voltage, but when it needed to draw that extra power, it did. So one point, the top one here where it says core CPU core voltage, the top one is the one I would recommend if you're using hardware info to keep an eye on everything. These bottom voltages, I believe they're, they're drawing more, the VRMs are drawing more to provide the CPU what it needs at that specific time and ADA stresses all kinds of different things CPU, FPU, cache and system memory um, and the memory is a whole different story which I will get into here in a moment but the 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 best thing I can say for you the, no matter what motherboard you're on is you're more than likely going to be able to hit 4 gigahertz with a 1.40 V core and you don't really have to touch load line calibration, switching frequency, SOC, LLC none of that uh, but if you want to go past that on a 2600 you more than likely going to need to uh, and I would recommend at least for the ASUS board maybe a medium um, or high low line calibration and then as far as the V core you want to do an offset and then uh, de depending on what motherboard you get my offset was uh, 0.28 375 I believe um, and that got me to about 1.42, 1.41 in certain cases. And then obviously, as you can see, because of that LLC and, and uh, switching frequency, by the way, was at 300. The stock one, at least on the, the B450M uh, um, 
tough edition board. I, you know, had the switching frequency that stock is 250, and that wasn't doing it for me, so I had to bump it up to 300. Um, but I was able to do stable benchmarks and runs, not a problem. Now, 3D Mark 003 isn't exactly anything important, but because I was doing hardware in uh, hardware bot uh, points, um, I wanted to show it to you anyway. And as you can see, the peak temp was 55C. It's really hard. It's in the corner here, 55.3C. And then on other benchmarks, I was sitting anywhere between uh, 55 to 65, depending on the benchmark. So here we are with uh, Cinebench um, 11.5 and I hit a 60.4 C uh, V core did spike at 1.43 but it was averaging 1.41 and that's that 4.2 gigahertz overclock that I was talking about um, next thing it you know I said I was pulling a lot of wattage so 1.24 which is why the stock uh, RAF cooler is not recommended whatsoever moving on to Cinebench R15 again I hit above 60 so 61.4 C was the maximum I hit um, and then I pulled 1.43 at certain points but m again stabilizing or being an average of 1.41 so that 1.41 1.42 is the sweet spot for a 4.2 gigahertz overclock at least on my system again every system may vary so you want to test and feel out where your system likes to sit I don't recommend going above 1.45 try not to you may get some readings where it shows like 1.47, 1.45. Don't freak out. It's okay as long as you're not pushing 1.5, 1.55, and you're not on liquid nitrogen. You should be absolutely fine. Um, just to confirm or verify, uh, I'm also on hardware bot under Serpent XSF, uh, obviously. Uh, but here's my uh, 4.189 overclock, or basically 4.2. If you look at the bottom here with me, uh, my memory was only able to hit 1429 basically that's uh, 2866 I was able to sustain um, 2933 for a little bit there but uh, and I mean that's basically what the website says too is the max system memory speed 2933 but I've seen people hit use 3200 uh, memory maybe I, I believe Bill Zoid said something about the max he's seen is 3600 but he wasn't able to push further than that so depending on your motherboard, you def definitely want to check out the QVL list and make sure your memory is on that list because otherwise you're not going to hit your clocks. Now my, my memory for this system, that Team Group uh, T-Force Delta 2 RGB memory was not on the QVL list. However, I was able to still run in dual channel. I was able to, instead of using DOCP, which is uh, AMD's XMP profile basically, I had to manually choose um, you know, the t where I wanted to run at. The voltage I had to increase to 1.36 and then I had to adjust the timings manually now what I could have done the stock timings at 16 18 18 18 36 but instead what I did is I, I, I got the voltage correct I got it to where it could boot 2866 I did try 2933 and 3000 it just wouldn't take it so 2866 is what I was left with but I was able to bring down the timings to around um, I believe 15, uh, 17, 17, 1735 or something like that. I could be wrong, but it, it you are able to run memory that's not on the QVL list. It's just you're not going to be able to hit the speeds uh, that it's advertised. So I just recommend uh, getting uh, one that's on the on the list. That way you can get the full performance out of your system. Uh, of course, the G Skill Trident Z RGB memory. Certain ones of those are available and are on the QVL list, um, and uh, you'll be able to run 3200 megahertz if not more than that uh, Geekbench just wanted to show you the the scores I got here this is uh, I believe on geek yeah Geekbench 4 I hit almost 5,000 on a single core and then uh, 2300 on a multi core and then on Geekbench 3 I hit 2700 and then 4400 on a single core um, moving Past that, this board is perfectly capable of handling the 26 and the 2600X. The cooler is the only prom or the only limiting factor. So definitely consider upgrading to uh, a liquid cooler of some type or just a better air cooler that can handle uh, a higher TDP. Uh, but if you don't, you'll be just fine with 3.9 or 4 gigahertz. Um, or if you get the 2600 because the voltage 
it can clock higher but keep the voltage lower you should just be you should be fine with that 95 watt TDP uh, cooler stock cooler I don't even think the stock cooler comes with it to be honest no it does thermal solution raft spire yeah well I got the raft stealth uh, you'll be getting the raft spire if you get the 2600 uh, and then you for the 2700 X you'll be getting the raft prism with RGB LED if you really wanted to do that but that guy's got 105 watt TDP now talking about the 1700 and 2700 X the B series motherboards going back to my previous video and recommending uh, Billzoid or actually hardware overclocking I don't believe I don't believe this motherboard can handle an overclocked uh, 2700X it probably can handle the 1700X or the 1700 but not the 2700X overclocked uh, because uh, just the the, the com capabilities it has the heat sink the VRM the phases uh, I was honestly pushing the 2600 uh, as far as I can go and I think uh, a system with uh, 8 core 16 threads would, would absolutely uh, surpass what the board is capable of I'm sure you could run it stock but as soon as you try to get an extra you know 400 megahertz 500 megahertz out of it you might be pushing the limit so if you're gonna get the 27 2700x or if you already have the 1700 and 1700x um, all right let me break it down this way 1700 1700x you're gonna be okay with the B series motherboard if you absolutely need to upgrade to the 450 uh, or yeah the into the new series AMD motherboards but if you're gonna get the 2700 X you wanna get into the X don't get the B's because the B boards are, are budget they're efficient they can not overclock um, or at least get yourself a good B series motherboard because you're gonna really push that board to the limit trying to run 8 core 16 threads at a above 4.3 gigahertz and just uh, pulling a high amount of TDP and power from that guy so uh, that's all I have for this video I wanted to give you the numbers on what I was able to achieve with my 2600 and I hope that you're able to achieve the similar uh, you know clocks core uh, voltage temps uh, but let me know I know for a fact gaming on the 2600 at 4.2 gigahertz with a liquid AIO cooler or custom liquid or just a good air cooler you're gonna be sitting anywhere between uh, 60 to 68 C maybe sp uh, speaking uh, 70 somewhere in there uh, so you'll be fine you'll be completely fine and you will be able to achieve the same results as a stock 2600 X um, but if you get the 2600 X obviously you could probably push that thing an extra four or five hundred megahertz and get up to 4.3 or 4.4 but it's completely up to you just make sure you have adequate cooling Make sure you're not overvolting, and make sure that you keep an eye on your, uh, you know, make sure that your your VRMs are gonna on the motherboard are gonna be able to handle the overclock that you're about to push through it. If not, all these motherboards have auto tuning, or most of them actually have auto tuning built in to where it determines based on your cooling, the the motherboard, the overall setup, what the best overclock threshold is. But prepare to be disappointed because they will always underclock. Um, below what your your target uh, you know frequency is so like share subscribe and comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching